All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. For everyone who's watching our live streaming video. So, uh, just wait for the others to watch our live discussion. Playing YouTube. We'll be discussing uh, word formation processes as part of your midterms, no? And the uh, morphology is uh, pre final sa long. So, word. Para na lang muna natin the word formation processes na uh, topic natin. Kasi additional dalaga siya sa um, what do you call this one? Sa, pre, uh, sa, sa midterms niya. Alright? So once again, good afternoon everyone. For those who are watching and uh, listening, you can sit back, relax, uh, while watching. You can also participate or comment. If ever na may question sa'yo or you have additional information regarding sa our talk. Regarding to our talk. Uh, Alright, so we started with uh, words and word formation processes. Right, that for American English or words for American English, um, there are things that are the words that mostly influenced by the Dutch or by the yeah Dutch right uh, region or Dutch words that became part of the English or the American English words. So we're now talking about what are the different uh, words and word formation processes occur in uh, the English language. Alright. So first one, we have etymology. So when we talk about etymology, it's the study of the origin and history of the word. That's etymology. It comes from um, like technical words or it comes through Latin or uh, Greek, right? So for example, uh, etymology it comes from the Greek na etymon and logia. Right, Etymon, which means original form, and Logia is study of. So, uh, so that we confuse also with the other word, entomology. Because entomon means insect, so entomology is not study of insects. It's etymology, E-D-Y-M-O-L-O-G-Y. So when we look closely at etymologies of less technical words, we soon discover that there are many different ways in which new words can enter the language. We should keep in mind that these processes have been work in the language for some time. A lot of words in daily use today were at one time considered barbaric, misuse of the language. Right? So it came from the Latin, it came from the Greek. Etymology. So rather than acts of the uh, as if the language being the base, we might prefer to view the uh, constant evolution of new words and new uses of old words as a reassuring sign of vitality and creativeness in the way of language is shaped by the needs of its user. Let's consider the ways. So for example, uh, when we start the Discussing the language, we uh, give or we give the origin, right? Or the history of the word. Language comes from the Latin word lingua, which means tongue, right? So, also with communication comes from uh, the Latin word na communis, the other one is communicare also. So that's etymology. Next one. Second formation is coinage. 
Alright, so for carbon age, so one of the least uh, common processes of word formation in English is coinage. So etymology, second one, we have coinage. So that is the invention of totally new terms. Coinage, coin, sandakinoin. So uh, typically, uh, the most typical sources are invented trade, names for commercial products have become general terms, usually without capital letters. For any version, for the pro uh, for the product, for example, aspirin, nylon, vaseline, uh, zipper. Uh, more more recent examples are Kleenex and Kleenex here. We also have Teflon, uh, Tylenol, and Xerox. Right, so we uh, consider the word Xerox. These words are coined. Right? They are invented. Coinage. So, for example, it may be that there is obscure technical origin. For example, tetra, uh, tetrafluoron. Uh, we have tetra, fl, and our on. For some of these invented terms. Alright, but after this, first coinage, they tend to become everyday words in the language. So, other terms for coinage, when we uh, base uh, on the name of a person or a place, is, it is called eponym. So, when we base the uh, word on the name of, of a person or a place, it, called, it is called eponyms or are called eponyms. For example, the Hoover, the uh, electric suction sweeper, or the vacuum cleaner, di ba? Hoover. Ito yeah. ay uh, uh, eponyms, or eponym. We're using eponym. We also have sandwich from 18th century, Earl of Sandwich. The first insisted on having his bread and meat together while gambling. Yeah. Sandwich. We also have jeans. Chains come from the Italian city of Chinoa, where the type fruit was first made. Right? We also have, uh, for example, we discovered uh, our invented things such as Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit as the uh, measurement of temperature, right? Fahrenheit. Yeah, in German, from the German Gabriel. Gabriel Fahrenheit, we also have Volt from Italian Alessandro, Alessandro Volta, and Watt yeah, from James Watt. Well, we're using these words like Fahrenheit, Celsius, and also Kelvin. So there are uh, the names, these are their based on the names on who discovered or invented these things. Yeah, Volta, Volt, Watt, James Watt. So these are called eponyms. So in coinage, ay yung alimbawa niya ay yan. Aspirin, nylon, vaseline, zipper, Linux, teflon. Those are what we call coinage. Na coin. Na invent. Totally new terms. Alright, then the other one is, uh, coin din sila, coinage din, pero ang ibang katawagan nila is eponyms. Eponyms. Diba? Uh, Jules, Newton's Law, Masi yung mga ganun. Fluorescent law. Kaya yung flores. So that's eponym. Because they're based on a person name or name of the person or the place. Alright. So we also have uh, borrowing. So etymology uh, coinage. Next one we have borrowing. And borrow, we borrow from um, other languages, right? For example, Filipino or uh, things, for example, language chat in Halo Halo. It's a combination of uh, English uh, and Spanish, right? Some of our words were borrowed from Spanish. 
So, as Bill Bryson observed in the quotation presented earlier, part of the most common source of new words in English is a process simply labeled, uh, labeled as borrowing. Yung ginawa natin, nakita natin ganina, or napansin natin kanina sa first part, coming from Dutch, diba, influenced by Dutch words, borrowing ang ginawa ng American. Or now, mga new English words, or new words in English. So that is the taking of our words from other languages. Borrowing, yung of nagbabaro. Diba? So throughout it, uh, its history, the English language has adopted a vast number of words from other languages, including Croissant, French, Dope, It's a Dutch, Lillac, Prussian, Piano, It's Italian, We also have Pretzel, come from German, Sofa, It's Arabic, Tattoo, Tahitia, Tycoon, Japanese, Yogurt, Turkish and zebra or zebra, it comes from Bantu. Right? So that's what we call uh, borrowing. Na, hindi lahat ng words ay talagang pure or gawa mismo ng English. Yung words sila. So, ibig sabihin, there are, some of the words or most of the English words or new words are borrowed. And then, parang nirevise nila, binago lang nila into their uh, accent. Diba? For example, uh, so Japanese, supa, and our supermarket, supermarket or supermarket, right? We also have typewriter, typewriter, right? typewriter. We also have Hungarians talking about sports, club, and football. Uh, the French discussing problems of less stress, less stress over a glass of le whiskey during the weekend, right? So those are what we call the borrowing. Um, if you watch videos from YouTube, there are things like this. Na, um, so, uh, they're, they're a bunch of girls, or they're girls, or no, ladies, pala, ladies, and they're from different uh, regions or different part of the world. Most, uh, mostly Asians and uh, one uh, American, then they usually talk about uh, what's the difference in their languages. Or, for example, magbibigay ng isang word itong American and then uh, sabihin ng Japanese, sabihin ng uh, Indonesian, Philippine, uh, isang Filipino, or Philippine, isang Filipino, right? isang Korean, and so on and so forth. So you can watch that one also. Alright? And... Um... Duncan Duncan, Donut Donut. French, the whiskey, La Stress, the weekend. Alright? Vancouver. Alright, so another special type of uh, borrowing is called loan translation or talk. And other term for loan translation is what we call talk. Talk, loan trans, uh, translation. Right, so for example, it's the uh, process, there is a direct translation of the elements of a word into the borrowing language. Interesting example is, for example, natin is yung French now, na gratisiel. Gratisiel, which means uh, scrape, spy. Also, uh, walking fabric, cloud sculpture. We also have walking kratzer, the cloud scraper. Right? So, to be uh, the English term for that seal, wealth and crabber and wealth and crater are or is skyscraper. Skyscraper. Movie of Green Johnson, the rock, Napanagina, skyscraper. Right? And also a, a song, right? skyscraper. So, for example, uh, the other um, word, English from Superman. Ah, uh, English, or loan translation or talk for Superman is, for German, it's Obermanx. 
Overmatch. And Lenwood. 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 Alright. Learn translation. Learn translation. So, no. Well, so, for example, so Spanish. Terras calientes. I want to eat terras calientes. But so, what is terras calientes? It's literally, uh, literally dogs, hot huh? Or hot dogs. No. And terras calientes. So, learn translation or talk. Uh, another one, boyfriend for American sound, uh, borrowing with sound modification, boyfriend, 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 and Chinese uh, friend, or uh, male for Chinese, male friend is non peng yu, non peng yu. Alright, so that's the that we call borrowing. So, most of the time, naman, lahat naman siguro ng language, it came from uh, borrowing, borrowing words from other languages. Right? So, hindi naman siguro la, hindi naman nabuhay, or hindi naman, um, hindi naman siguro, what do you call this one? Uh, something na disgrace, or, uh, something na hindi maganda yung pagbayo ng mga words coming from other uh, from other um, languages or for, uh, from other regions so yan, yan uh, that's what we call borrowing and uh, other uh, special type of borrowing is long translation or okay. Next one, we have compounding. So, for compounding, ang uh, ginagawa naman natin dito, yes, yan. Kung, um, we add two words. Training two separate words to produce a single word. Compound, yan ang word na compounding. Napaka-elementary naman siguro. Itong uh, word na compounding. Alright? So, in some of those examples, we have just considered there is a training of two separate words to produce a single form. Thus, plan and word are combined to produce number in German. So, so technically, the same with English, no? You add two words, and then, syempre, there is a new word form for it. For example, book plus case, bookcase. Face plus book, Facebook. Right? Door plus knob, door knob. Finger plus print, fingerprint. We also have sunburn, textbook, wallpaper, waste basket, and water bed, and so on and so forth. So those are what we call uh, compounding. And there and also the, yeah, there are many uh, words that were uh, part of compounding. Well, you can give also examples. Sa ating uh, um, comment section, right? You can also give examples. I can show it naman. Uh, top your comment. Alright? So, some also the uh, uh, all these examples are known, but you can also create compound adjectives like good looking. Low paid, uh, fast plus food, fast food, right? Um, we also have full plus time, full time job, plus fast food restaurant. Diba? We also have, um, I don't know if I'm language. Uh, from, from, uh, spoken in from Spokane in East Asia, right? Uh, HW plus Kais, watch Kais, watch Kais, or Kais, diba? Pudge plus, diba? Iba, iba na. Uh, sa atin mayroon, bahag plus hari, bahag hari. Kapit plus bahay, kapit bahay, okay? Compounding. Ganoon din sa atin. So, aside from nouns, we also have compounding of, or compound adjectives. Perfect, no? 
good looking, low paid, and so on and so forth. All right. So yeah, um, ethymology, coinage, borrowing, and then uh, compounding. Next one we have blending. So for blending, uh, for example, sa choir, the blend, the kaharon ng blending, kaharon ng pagbeblend ng process, right? So same with the uh, word formation process, there is what we call blending. Words form uh, a combination of two separate forms. To produce a single new term is also present in the process of the blend. So, may dalawang form, dalawang word, and then parang na-delete yung other part of it, and then na-combine to form or to produce a single new term. It's called blending. So, however, blending is typically uh, accomplished by taking the wall only the beginning of the word and joining it to the other, or joining it to the end of the other word. For example, uh, gasoline plus alcohol. Right, so when we try to blend it, gasoline plus gas oil, take the first word of the word gasoline, it's gas, plus the last part of the word alcohol, it's oil, it's last syllable. So when we uh, combine these words, we will gain the word or the product. Uh, the blended word would be gasohol. Right? Gasoline plus alcohol, it's gasohol. Uh, smoke and fog, usually we know this one, it's smog. Smoke plus fog, nagiging smog. Right? So for example, um, places where they have a lot of stuff, they can uh, jokingly, I can jokingly make a distinction between smog, smaze, smoke plus haze, smaze, uh, smoke plus smirk is smirk. Right? Aside from smog. So we also have uh, um, bit. It's a combination of the word binary and digit. We have bit. Siya. We also have branch. Usually uh, heard that one. Branch. We can take our branch. Right? Breakfast plus lunch. Uh, breakfast and lunch. And again, branch. We also have motor hotel. Motor plus hotel or motta, motta, motel, motor hotel. Telecast. Right? Television broadcast, telecast. We also have channel. C H U N N E L, channel plus uh, tunnel, connecting England and France, and again, channel. Channel parin siya yung pronunciation niya, but. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference in the spelling. It's H-U, hindi siya C-H-A. Alright. Meron ba? We have um, Teleton. Right? Um, television and Marathon. Teleton. Trilaton or Trilaton. Diba? Info yeah, uh, infotainment. Information plus entertainment. Infotainment. They are what we call blending. Simulcast, simultaneous broadcast. Right? Simulcast. We also have um, and mixing languages, for example, Franglais or Franglais, French and English. We also have Spanish, Spanish English, Spanish, Tagalog English. Right? Diba? Meron ng tinahal natin, blending. So, um, we also have telex. All right, telex means teleprinter exchange and modem, modulator, uh, demodulator. And modulator, demodulator, kaya pala modem. Ano pa, Wi-Fi, wi wireless fidelity, kaya Wi-Fi. Diba? All right, so that's what we call a blending. Binablend natin yung dalawang word to create a new term. 
uh, kukuha natin yung unang part o uh, unang uh, beginning of the word, of the uh, first word, and then kukunin natin yung end ng other word. That's what we call bullet. R. Next one, we have clipping. So for clipping, uh, it is uh, the element of reduction that is not uh, noticeable in blending is even more apparent in the process described as clipping. Alright, so this occurs when a word or more than one syllable is uh, reduced to a shorter form. For example, fox simile. Fox simile nagiging fox. Siguro yung nga for example natin na little, nagiging little, it's clipping. Ito na yung halimbawa nyo, example nyo. Alright? Fox simile, fox, little, nagiging little, clipping ang ginagawa natin. Alright? Usually beginning in casual speech, we also have gas. Mabas na gasoline, nagiging gas na lang siya. So, clipping yung ginagawa natin. Uh, ano ba? Ad. Right? Advertisement. Ad. We also have bra, bracer. So, di correct na uh, adit. Um, what do you call this one? First version of Bryce Bracer. Ad advertisement, right? Uh, Blocky, can you... This is Blocky. Can you call, call out your uh, classmates or watching? Sa Blocky na nanonood niya, please call out those uh, classmates niyo na wala sa live natin. Can you tell them to please watch our live discussion sa GC natin? Masyadong kukunti yung nanonood sa or yung dapat na sa kahit na sa 20 plus lang sa hadang. Alright? Black A? Can you tell them that we're having uh, this but this is a live discussion? Black A? Abigail, please check uh, the attendance afterwards na nandito ito lang na lucky. Call them out. Alright, so that's what we call clipping. Uh, Pinapakil natin yung word. It's the process of what we call clipping. Where uh, redux, uh, reduction or uh, sinashort natin yung term. Ano ba? Example natin. Uh, cab. It's cabriolet. Uh, cabriolet. Condo. Condominium. Fan. It's fanatic. Well, no? Fan. Fanatic. Flu. It's influenza. In the right term or yung wrong word niya. We also have firm. Permanent wave. Papaperm ako. Phone. Telephone or cell phone. We also have plane. Airplane. Uh, pub, it's public house, right? So those are what we call clipping. We're just shortening uh, the term for that word. Shortening, diba? Shorten term or shorten term of the word. But, syempre, yun nga, um, words natin ay mahaba. Yun. For example, yung taxi, mahaba talaga ang word na taxi. Ang ginawa lang natin, kinlip na lang natin siya. Kaya taxi na lang siya taxi calibrator, eh, mahaba ang word na taxi. Also, and others name for I, Ed, Liz, Mike, Ron, Sam, Sue, and Tom. Uh, parang siguro, uh, Aloysius, nagiging Al na lang. Edward, nagiging Ed na lang. Liza, nagiging Liz na lang. Michael, nagiging Mike. Ronyel, nagiging Ron. Samuel, nagiging Sam. Um, Sue, um, Susie, nagiging Sue. Tommy nagiging Tom, right? So, clipping ang ginagawa din natin. Alright, so, aside from that, syempre yung mga um, subjects natin, diba? 
uh, chem, chemistry, examine, exam, examination, gym, gymnasium, lab, lab, laboratory, right? Math, it should be mathematics, uh, science or physical education, we also have policy or policy, Colbrook, right? Political science, political government, or politics and government, we have prof, professor, typo, typographical, right? So that's what we call clipping. Shortening of the word or reduced to a short term form. So other form of clipping is um, what we call the hypochorisms. So when we talk about hypochorisms, ang nilalagay natin is, that means the process, a longer word is reduced to a single syllable, then Y or Y-E, I-E is added to the end. So ang ginagawa natin is, pinapalitan natin ng word, hindi lang pinapalitan, pinapalit natin pala ng Y, at Y-E yung dulot. For example, ito yung mga Australian and English and British English. For example, uh, moving pictures sa giging movie, tally, television, Aussie, Aussie, it's Australian, Barbie, it's barbecue, Bookie, bookmaker, Brekkie, breakfast, we also have hanky, do you have any hanky? Handkerchief. And you can probably guess what crazy presses are. Crazy pressy? Do you know crazy presses? Right? So it's a typical or particular type of reduction favored from Australian and British English. Crazy pressy, it's, yung pala malapit na rin naman na, Christmas presents. Crazy pressy. Right? Christmas presents. So those are what we call Clipping and special type of it is hypochorisms. Hypochorisms. Clipping. Alright, so we also have back for me. So for back formation, it is a very specialized type of reduction, a uh, process known as back formation. Typically a word or one word of type, usually a noun, is reduced to a form of word of another type, usually verb. For example, if back form uh, formation, it's television, then ginawa natin uh, verb siya, televised. From television a noun, and then nagiging televised into verb. Created from it. So, ibig sabihin, yung back formation is from noun to verb. From the word itself. Now, television, televise. Uh, donation, donate. Emotion, emote. Enthusiasm, enthus. Uh, liaison, we have liaise. Babysitter, we have babysit. Diba? So, from the uh, noun word nagkaroon tayo ng verb form ng word na yun. Kaya tinatawag natin back formation. Uh, for example, uh, back formation, did you know that the oat was back form from option? Option naging oat. Right? A worker, work. So the assumption seems to have uh, been that, they, uh, that if there is a noun ending in ER, or something close in sound, then uh, we can create a verb for what the noun ER does. For example, editor, edit, sculptor, sculpt, burglars, burg, uh, yeah, burglar, or burglars, peddlers, pedal, we have swind swindlers, swindlers, uh, swindle, burglar, pedal, and swindle, right? So that's what we call back formation from the original word or from uh, the noun word nagkakaroon tayo ng verb form nito na tinatawag natin back formation. Right? Hope you get it. Back formation. 
สำนาวตัวอันนี้ verb form นิ่งนาวเนี่ย television televise donation อันนี้ verb form เนี่ย donate so that's what called back formation All right, so we also have conversion. It only means a function of word. All right, so we also have to know the function of the word. It's a conversion. For example, when a noun comes to be used as a word without any reduction, it is generally known as conversion. It is our nothing and category change and functional shift. So, mean, so it's some form or it's some paragraph. Paragraph, for example. As a some sentence, you should know what is the function of the word. Right? You, we should know, or you should know, what is the function of the word in some sentence. Because it can change its function. If you think about it, if you think about it, if you think about it, you know, it's a word. But if you use it in a word, it's a word. The sentence say verb. So, what we say is conversion. For example, and then a number of nouns such as bottle, bottle, chair, and vacation have come to be used through conversion as verbs. We bottled the whole brew last night. Bottle, we bottled. Bottle is noun, but on we bottled, we bottled in a long verb. We bottled the whole brew last night. Have you bottled the toast? Right, the bottle it's a noun. Pero sa have you bottled the toast? Nagiging verb siya. That's conversion. And someone has to chair the meeting. Someone has to chair to chair to plus the base form of the verb. So in chair nagiging verb yung ta sentence natin. Someone has to chair the meeting. They're vacationing in Florida. So vacation nagiging ing vacationing. Right? Because now they, they are having vacation in Florida. So, ginawa niyang they're vacationing in Florida. Ginawa niyang verb yung vacation. Talaga niya ng ING. So, naging gerund form of the verb. Di ba? So, that's what we call uh, conversion. So, these conversions are readily accepted. But some examples such as the noun impact being used as a verb seem to impact some people's sensibilities rather negatively. So the conversion process is particularly productive in modern English with new uses occurring frequently. For example, uh, verbs becoming nouns with guess. Guess, must, and spy. As the sources of a guess, a guess, a must. A spy, right? Phrasal verbs to print out, to take over, also becomes now a print out, right? A take over, so conversion. Uh, one complex verb combination, want to be, uh, became a new noun or a new noun as in he isn't in the group, he just a wanna be. Want to be. It's a slang, right? It's a the assimilation of the word. Now, want to be na giging want to be assimilation. Want to be assimilation. Want to be na giging want to be. Verbs see through and stand up became also become adjectives like see through material. Na giging adjective sa description describing the word material. A see-through material, stand out. Nagiging adjective din siya sa word na as a phrase na stand up comedian. Di ba? describe niya yung comedian. Stand up comedian. Right? For example, break the floor. Breaking floor. Ah, empty room. And some crazy ideas, and those nasty people can become the verb to to dirty when you added to infinitive to dirty plus to empty or the nouns a crazy and the nasty. Nagiging noun sila. 
Imbes na yung dirty is we all know it's a description or describing word. Adjective dapat, pero in the usage, nagiging verb siya, nagiging noun siya. To dirty, to empty, verbs, um, a crazy, and a nasty, those are nouns naman. So that's conversion. So, complex talaga ang English word. Masyadong maraming uh, ang tag dito. Um, complicated talaga siya. Complex din talaga siya. Sobrang uh, shuffle, no? Ang English words natin. Or mga English words. Sana kaya po ang hindihin yung uh, sabi natin. So, some compound nouns so have some adjective or adver uh, verbal functions. Example, I exemplify the ballpark appearing in a ballpark figure. Uh, to ballpark an estimate of cost. We also have carpool, mastermind, microwave, uh, quarter box, which are all regularly used as verbs, but uh rin siyang going noun. Other forms such as up and down can also become verbs. They are going to up the price of oil or with down the few bills at the uh, chimes. Right? So that's the conversion. Ibig sabihin yung category or yung lexical category, uh, lexical label, or part of speech ng isang word, nag-change based dun sa usage na. That's conversion. From noun to verb, from adjective to verb, or to noun, based on the usage of the sentence. Yeah. Minsan kailangan mong alamin din kung paano ginamit yung word sa sentence. Alright? So, next one we have acronyms. Ito, ang um, alam din natin, how words are form, acronyms, or word formation processes. So, for acronyms naman, um, for example, sa acronyms, these are the words of forms such as CD. CD, compact disc, VCR, video cassette recorder. Where the pronunciation uh, consists of saying each separate letter. More typical acronyms are pronounced as new single words such as or as in NATO, or in, uh, NATO, we have also NASA, and UNESCO. Alright, so pag uh, CD, VCR, ang tawag da, ang tawag, special Word natin doon is initialism. Initialism kasi ini-initial natin siya. Pero kapag binabanggit natin yung word, it is called acronyms. Like NATO, NASA, UNESCO. Pero pag ini-isa-isa natin, CD, VCR, APM, alright? So ang tawag doon ay initialism kasi ini-initial natin siya. So that's the difference between the two. Pag binabanas, ay, binab uh, binabasa mo siya, Binabanasa. Binabasa mo siya as a single word, it is called acronyms. Pero kapag ka, iniisa-isa mo yung, yung letter, it's called initialism. From the words of initial. Right? NATO, NATO, NASA, and UNESCO. But also there are uh, words na hindi capital letters lagi. For example, laser, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. That's the full, uh, full term for laser. Diba? Laser. I also have radar, radio detecting and ranging. Scuba. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Zip. Zone improvement plan. Snafu, situational, normal, or found out. 
all fouled up. And so we also have my mothers against drunk driving. We are women against rape. ATM, automatic teller machine. We have PIN, personal identification number. Right? As I sometimes forget my PIN number uh, when I go to the ATM machine. So <laughs> I forget my personal identification number number when I go to the ATM machine, automatic teller machine machine. So I so I sometimes forget my PIN when I go to the ATM. Good lang sa atin. So that's what we call the acronyms and initialism. So there are many uh, acronyms and there are also initialisms in the end Also we have uh, derivation. So derivation yan, sa affixes na yan. Affixes, yan. prefix and suffixes. Right? There are what we call derivation. So, when you add uh, prefixes or when you add affixes or bits sa uh, root word natin or sa base word natin, yung tawag natin itong derivation. Derivation. Like, uh, ayan. Am, mis, pre, full, less, is, ism, nest, for example, am plus happy, nagiging unhappy. Miss plus represent, misrepresent. Pre plus judge, prejudge. Joy plus full, joyful. Care plus less, careless. Boy plus ish, boyish. Terror plus ism, or ism, terrorism. Sad plus nest, sadness. That's the derivation. So those are what we call prefixes and suffixes. Or, uh, general time nila ay affixes. Affixes. Pre, added before the word. Pre, ngayon pre. And suffix or ad, a word added. Uh, after. Uh, added in the, uh, add to the end of the word. Ang um, prefixes naman ay word added to the beginning of the word. Added to the beginning of the word is what we call pre fixes. So fixes naman ay added to the at the end or to the end of the word. Misled. Miss prefix. Disrespectful. We have this and full prefix and suffix. Foolishness. Full, ish and ness, we have suffixes. Set two, suffixes. We can also have suffixes. Uh, infixes, now in the English, but uh, not common for the language. Infixes. Infix, it means it's not. Sad and marami talaga. Uh, um and in. Kain, plus, lagi mo sigit na infix na. Ang itlapi, di ba? Itlapi na um, kumain, kinain, um at in, di ba? Inom, uminom, ininom. Right? So that's in fixes. So, for the English speakers, they usually have this one. Uh, hallelujah. So they usually add the bloody. Um, imbis na hallelujah, naging hallelujah. They also have absolutely. Right? Get M, get M. Absolute get M lately and we also have and fucking believable. And unfucking believable. Right? So those are what we call N fixes. So these are like, uh, uh, these are just expressions for English speakers. Now, blood B, hello, blood and Luya. Also have absolute get M lately and we have the un fucking believable and fucking believable right well so then single uh single blood for 
sa Vice Crematorium of Ground to Singapore. Iba sa Singapore, Singapore. Let's part of me even in fiction element as in God Triple Jamet. God Triple Jamet. And lastly, for the word formation and uh, word formation processes, we have multiple processes. Multiple processes. So, mean, yung word, nag-under ko siya ng other, uh, hindi lang isang process, kundi dalawang process. No? For example, and the term belly, so, belly seems to have become a common American English expression via process of first borrowing delicatessen, delicatessen from German, then clipping that borrowed form. So, delicatessen, it's borrowed, and then nagigin deli. Clipping. So, dalawang nangyari sa kanya. So, sa so word, uh, yung term na deli, it was borrowed or borrowing siya and keeping. Right? So if someone says, if someone says that problems with the project have snowballed, the final word can be analyzed as example of compounding, compounding, snow and bow. Right? And then, in a uh, conversion, say so snowball, it can be uh, snowball is a noun, and then in the use of the language, or in the use of the sentence, the pro uh, problems with the project have snowball, naging verb siya. So, dalawang nangyari, compounding and conversion. Okay. For snowball. And laser. So, laser is acronym, di ba? Tapos may word tayong lace. So, ang lace ay nanggaling sa word na laser, which is acronym, and then uh, lace is also back formation. So, dala nangyari sa lace, back formation, and acronym. Acronym mo na siya, tapos uh, back formation. We also have waspish attitudes. Acronym wasp. Uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant waspish so wasp is acronym plus the suffix ish sa so dalawa yung uh, process sa kanya acronym and derivation process alright so Young urban, <coughs> also have young urban professional, young urban professional plus um, hypocrisms, nagiging yapi. Yapi, yapi. So, ito naman ay nangyari sa word na Ayan. analogy. Analogy naman ang term sa kanya. Wherein the word, it came from N. It uh, also had a basis of acronym. Youth International Party. And And also, ah, uh, uh, other one is yippie naman. Yapi, yippie, and we also have hippies. So those are what we call mul uh, multiple processes. So it came from, uh, from other word formation processes and then may nangyari na naman sa kanya or may bagong pangyayari na naman sa kanya na process. 
So, many of these new words can, of course, have a brief lifespan, perhaps the generally accepted test of the arrival of recently formed words in a language is their published appearance in a dictionary. However, even this may not occur without protest from some uh, conservative voices, as Noah Webster found when his dictionary published in 1806 was criticized for citing words like advocate and test as verb and for including such verbal words as advisory and presidential. It would seem that Noah had a keener sense that his critics of which new words formed in the language were going to last. Which is, we're using the word naman na advocate, advisory, and presidential in the present time. So, advocate. To test, magiging verbs. No? Yung from advocate to advisory, That's what we call multiple processes or the conditions of work. As a phenomenon. And then, once upon a time, there was three birds, Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and Baby Bear, live in the country near the forest. Pala. Nice house, and no mortgage. One day, Papa, and, uh, one day, Papa Mama, and Baby go bitch, Baby go bitch, only they forget to lock the door. By and by comes Goldilocks. She got nothing to do but make trouble. She push all the food down to the mouth, no leave a crumb. Then she goes upstairs and sleeps in all beds. So yung translation ng uh, phonology natin nung una. No? Alright, so nagbakayang sinabi ko lang yun. Uh, so those are the words and word formation processes that we have. Okay. Uh, how words are formed, no? how words are created. Coinage, we also have borrowing, Compounding, blending, we also have creeping, uh, back formation, conversion, acronyms, uh, we also have deriv uh, derivation, we have prefixes and suffixes, also infixes or derivation din sila. And lastly, we have multiple processes. So those are the different types of word and word tests and itong morphology sa uh, pre-finals na natin siya is start o yung concept ng morphology is sa pre-finals so for uh, intro to linguistics will be on uh, whichever kung ano yung uh, mag-start basta within Thursday and Friday that will be our exam um, the problem is Yun nga lang, there, uh, some of your classmates may, may or may not take the exam kasi conflict and time, so uh, mas gusto ko, mas gusto ko sana magsabay, black ay black, you know? so find a time, yun na lang dati, if ever, uh, mag-asa lang kayo ng, um, and sabihin nyo ko sa instructor nyo sa time na, sa time na yun, Ngayon, ngayong time na ito, uh, one of those, guru, pwede natin, uh, pag Thursday, i ano ko sa contemporary, ang exam natin, contemporary ko. And then ang Friday is um, intro linguistics sana. Okay? Kasi tapos na rin naman na kayo sa ibang ata, ibang uh, professor nyo, instructor nyo about your midterm exam. So, um, yun lang. Check nyo ako kung sino instructor nyo. Black A and Black B, kung may naman na Black B dito. Forever. No? Ah, uh, sige. Ako uh, sabi na lang ako maya pala. Para Black A, and sig siguro at ang linguistics will be on uh, Friday, and Thursday will be your 
um, contemporary. Pero if ever na conflict ang ano, tingnan, tingnan na lang natin. No? Mas uh, prepared naman, prepared ko na lang yung exam. So, if ever kung contemporary or uh, or intro to linguistics. Alright, and uh, I'll be what do you call this one? Collecting your activities sa Google Classroom. So, isaset, isaset ko na yun ngayong araw. So, I'll be, I'll be collecting your uh, activities na dun sa transcription about uh, vowels and other activities. Alright. So, that will be all. So, hope you learn something. Hope you... Uh, get something sa ating uh, a lesson for this afternoon. So, thank you for the viewers and listeners for this class. Alright, so that will be all. So, thank you God bless. Thank you for attending our... Uh, thank you for attending my live streaming people. Alright, so thank you God bless. Goodbye.